Please welcome Mr. Nigel Tan. All right. So, good morning, everybody. And, um, you know, thank you all for coming. Um, I guess one of... Oops. Let me go stand in the middle. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, what I wanted to share with you a little bit today is about how organizations like ours can stay ahead of the cybersecurity game. All right? If you take a look back just last year, you've seen a lot of um, data breaches. Right? Organizations such as JP Morgan, right, uh, Target, it's just been um, a big smorgasbord of uh, incidents that have happened. Right? Um, and what it tells us is that the cyber criminals are really refocusing their efforts to um, targeting um, all of us right? as, as organizations because we have something they want. Right? Um, which is information, right? They, they can sell this information out on, on the black market and they can actually make a lot of revenue from it. Um, I don't know, how many of you have actually heard of uh, uh, Robert Mueller? Anybody? Robert Mueller was the director of the FBI and he said um, there are two types of companies in this world. Companies that have been hacked and companies that are going to be hacked, all right? There's no such thing as a company that's never hacked. It's only a company that has been hacked or somebody that ha is going to be hacked. Um, I'll take a look back on how crime used to be done, all right? In the past, it was all about going to a bank or, or holding up a, a train um, where money was going, right? So you physically would go and rob something. Right? Um, that was the old world. Because, and what that was, was um, the impact was, was quite limited. I mean, there's only so much money that a train can move, right? Or, or, a, or a truck. Uh, granted, it may be you know, millions and millions of dollars worth of gold bars, um, but that's still so much that it can do. Nowadays, with money actually being digital, Right? It's so much easier and the impact is so much greater um, when cyber criminals go after it. Right? Laws, in our, laws in our countries nowadays haven't caught up yet to be able to persecute um, these people. Right? So there's a lot of focus um, uh, that these criminals are, are putting on in carrying out cyber crime and we all would therefore be um, you know, their victims and that, that we are the people they are targeting. Um, so, as I mentioned, it's been more organized, right? They're getting more and more organized. They're getting very collaborative, right? So you think social. Um, think about how we collaborate on things like Facebook, on Twitter. The results of which will be sent to another group, right? And that group can be outsourced to actually do a penetration, right? And then that's sent to another group which actually does the uh, capture of the data, exfiltrate the data, and then the and last group carries out maybe a denial of service attack to, um, to get everyone's attention away from the actual exfiltration. Right? So the way that they're running their business um, is very specialized, right? and they even like how we run our business, right? and they're getting very specialized and, and they're even outsourcing these capabilities. And they're also getting more and more automated. The other thing that these um, criminals are doing is they're actually using business intelligence, just like us, right? We look at trends in the business to figure out where it's going to go. Where would we place our bets? Very similarly, the criminals do that as well. They look at trends on what the new um, adoption rates are. Are people moving, or everyone's moving to the cloud? Which cloud are people moving to, right? That will be the areas which they will target. Which mobile platform, right? Which mobile device uh, are they looking at? That's something that they will, uh, they will start to, to look at very closely as well. Right? So cyber criminals are using all this intelligence to, um, to determine who to attack as well. Right? If you take a look and you think, um, if anyone thinks that you know, um, crime is on a rise, it's just on a rise, uh, I think they have to think again. 
right? It's on a rise for sure. If you take a look at the chart, each bubble shows a specific breach, right? Um, and the size of the bubble is how big that breach was. Obviously, um, last year in 2014, there were a lot more bubbles, and the bubbles are bigger, right? But what's interesting is that this is an exponential um, uh, increase. Year on year, it's not just increasing by a matter of, you know, um, 2%, 3%, it's increasing exponentially, right? Year on year. Um, and so eventually, all organizations will get enveloped um, by this. And so it's really important uh, for us, again, right? To make sure that we're ahead of the game. So how do we do it? Okay? So what this calls for is a new way to think about security, right? Um, in the past, the, there used to be this, this um, uh, concept of buying best of breed solutions, right? So you buy the best firewall, you buy the best antivirus. But nowadays, I think there's a need to uh, look at best of need, right? How do we go about addressing these, these, um, all the various threat actors all right, that are out there, and how do we manage the security within our organizations? Okay. So we came up with four security imperatives. These, I think, are things that all organizations should think about all right, and address as they move down this journey and, um, of protecting their organizations. Right? The first is to be able to stop advanced threats. All right? Threats are constantly evolving. Right? I'm sure everybody in this room have heard of this advanced threats or advanced persistent threats. They're always evolving. The hackers are always evolving. Right? So how do we go about putting capability in place to be able to stop them? The second is, after all, what is most critical to an organization? It's your assets. Right? How do I protect them? Right? And do I even know where they are? Thirdly, all organizations, this, this is what we call a disruptive technology. And I think the previous speakers uh, spoke about it as well. Cloud and mobile. Right? Like it or not, cloud and mobile is here. And so how do we securely embrace those technologies? Right? And finally, how do we look to optimize the security program? Right? So I'll run through um, a few of these in, in, in a bit of detail. Okay? First, we're talking about advanced threats. You want to have the ability to detect these threats in real time, right? It makes no sense if they, if they come in, right, and you don't know about it. Remember, I talked about organizations that have been hacked but don't know about it. Imagine if you have a house. It's like a robber, right, or, or a thief coming into your house and sitting in your house, listening to all your conversations, right, going through all your things, for two, no, three quarters of a year, right? Three quarters of a year before you find him. And even when you do find him, what are you gonna, how, how are you gonna kick him out, right? So that's the problem that we're facing. So you wanna be able to detect these threats in real time. You wanna be able to, and, and you wanna be able to look beyond the horizon, right? Of what you have. When I say beyond the horizon, a lot of organizations look within the pyramid. Why does that, why do you need to know that? Because the world, in, with the advent of the internet and in cyber, the world is flat. There is no such thing as being in Russia or Australia, right, or Indonesia. I can be a hacker anywhere in the world and I can reach anyone I wanted to, right? That's the, that's the game of the internet. It is that open. Right? I can be sitting in Brazil and I can reach into Indonesia, just like that. Right? So it's really important to look outside your borders as well, right? your span of control. And of course, the next big thing that we're looking at is fraud. Right? So um, criminals are going to carry out fraud. They may not just come in and steal your information, they may actually act like legitimate people and actually transfer funds, right, or do nasty things, right? And so you want to be able to defend against that, right? Be, be it through your web channels 
or even mobile channels. There is a myth that you know there are solutions out there. There is a silver bullet that will f that will you know solve all my security problems. That's a true myth, right? Anybody who's in security uh, understands that uh, there's no such thing as a silver bullet in security, right? Anybody who tells you that security is your 100% secure? Okay, second imperative. We talk about critical assets. Really, it's about data. It's about information, right? And organizations' crown jewels are its in, is its information. Now, the big question is, how do you know, do you know who has access to that information, right? <coughs> Over time, user rights tend to expand. Right? Do, you know, do you know if you have the right amount of control over the information that, uh, that's critical to your business? Right? That's, that's one of the things organizations will have to answer, right? and, and that they are struggling to answer that. Um, the second is, uh, do you know where this information is? With, um, mobile, with uh, people moving to mobility, um, started off with laptops, now they're carrying that information home with them. Right? Mobile phones may have that corporate information, right? sensitive information. It might be on cloud services. Right? For all you know, he's got Dropbox installed and he's syncing it up to the cloud and to his home computer. Do you know where that information lives? Right? And how do you control that? Third thing, application security. Right? Are, are you, do you know what risks are, available, um, are there uh, to your application? All right? And of course, making sure you secure your infrastructure. Now, the reality is that only about 1% to 2% of your information is really, really crit critical. All right? um, the study that, that uh, was commissioned by IBM um, uh, among some of the top CIOs in the world, and we found that 70% of an organization's value is only made out about 0.1 to 2 percent, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll take the average 1 percent. So 1 percent of your information is really, really critical, right? And that's the one you've got to go after first. Once you've got that down, then you can figure out what to do with all the, all the rest. A lot of organizations take broad sweeping strokes across all their information, right? And, and the reality is not all information is created equal, right? So you have to treat them differently. The other thing also, and this is another study that we did, um, was that a lot of organizations spend a lot of um, time and money on the network side of things, right? Uh, and not a lot on the application. Do you know how vulnerable the application is? Have you fixed those vulnerabilities, right? And so you can see the, the, the spend, security spend is the one in gray, right? For network, there's more security spend than there is actual risk, right? So you're overspending. A lot of us are overspending in that area. But on the application layer, it's the other way around. The risks are there, but we're not spending enough to be able to counter that risk. Cloud and mobile, like I said, right? Whether you like it or not, cloud and mobile is something that, um, that is coming. And so a lot of us will have to start adopting it, right? If we don't do it, trust me, your users will be doing it, right? They'll be signing up for Dropbox and all the others, um, you know, when they want to. Okay, I've got to move a little bit faster now. I'm running out of time. Um, lastly, the fourth imperative is really about optimizing your security program. A lot of us uh, organizations, when they, when they start off, they start buying you know, firewalls, antivirus, so on and so forth, and they're buying them in silo. Right? And what needs to happen is integrating all of that together all right? to be able to get a complete view and complete control across all the security that you have in your organization. Right? Um, the 83% of um, enterprises uh, are really f finding it difficult to find security skills. All right? Security is a zero unemployment industry. Right? There are more jobs than there are actual people. Right? So it's really hard to find. Um, so that's where you know, a lot of organizations have to reach out um, to experts to be able to, to, to help them. Um, so I won't run through these. These are some of the examples of organizations which have uh, adopted these uh, initiatives. 
uh, and imperatives, and they have actually um, you know, some success stories around that. I'll leave this for you to read through. I just wanted to run through um, a little bit about IBM and, and our security uh, business. Um, our journey started um, back in 2011 when we first acquired Q1 Labs. Right? Uh, we started IBM Security Services uh, Systems in 2012 and, and um, IBM Security Services uh, in 2013. This year, we've brought everything together under one banner called IBM Security. So all our solutions and our services as one. Right? And this is something we're starting out this year. Over the last um, four years, we've actually grown. Right? Starting from, from, from a zero business, we've actually grown to being number three in the world um, in, in terms of security. Right? So we're the third largest security company in the world. Uh, we talk about integration and I talk about um, the need to have that control across your organizations. And that's what we're doing at IBM. Right? Um, if you take a look at, at this um, slide, all our technology is all integrated amongst each other. Right? So that when we find a vulnerability in, a, uh, in an application, for example, we can tell our um, IPS, our XGS, to actually virtually patch it right? before the, even a patch is applied. Right? And so this integration is really, really crucial. Finally, I want to bring up one, one, um, one thing. Uh, we started something called Exchange, X-Force Exchange. Right? I talked earlier about criminals collaborating. This is a platform for us as security professionals to collaborate. Right? You can go to the website exchange.xforce.ibmcloud.com, sign up, it's all free, all right? and you can, start collab you can see what threats are out there, and you can start collaborating among your peers uh, on, on the threats that you see and, and find out more about what they're seeing as well, so you can better defend yourself. Right? We had about 1,000 organizations sign up in the first week that we launched this earlier this year. Okay? And with that, I am uh, out of time. You can learn more about IBM Security. These are some of the links to our, uh, to our site uh, where you can you know, find out more. All right? Uh, with that, I thank you all. Thank you very much, and I'll see you the rest of the afternoon. <laughs>